Well, everybody, what's the crack? And welcome back to episode number 33 of the Inline G Flute Podcast with me, your host, motherfucking Inline G. I tell you what, lads, it is hard to keep a secret around here because you've all seen the title of this video or episode, so you know what's coming already. We have another guest on this podcast. Since Maggie Munye came on just a few weeks ago, the floodgates seem to have opened for superstar European flute players, so stay tuned for what's coming up next. But anyway, a few weeks ago, I travelled all the way down to Luxembourg for free, thank you very much, European Socialism, to catch up with one of my personal, my truly personal favourite flute players in the world. I actually caught her coming out of a rehearsal and she kindly made time in her very, very busy schedule to just sit down and talk a little bit of shite with me. Now, before I let you loose on that interview, I've got some very quick housekeeping. In fact, if you want to skip this, if you've heard it all before, go ahead and skip to the interview. But I need to tell you guys about the Patreon. Now, before that, actually, quickly, there is some big news coming soon about sponsors. Ooh. But you'll have to wait for that. I haven't got my act together quick enough. So... We'll talk about the Patreon instead. The N9G podcast is free and it will always be free. However, if you want to donate to the podcast, you can now do so through the Patreon page. On the screen now is the address. And for the audio listeners, it is patreon.com forward slash the inline G flute podcast. Now, it costs five euros or five dollars or five pounds per month. And with that, you are keeping single handedly keeping this podcast alive. I do everything around here. Everything from marketing to graphic design, research scripts, audio production, video production, etc, etc, etc. It's all done by yours truly. So by becoming a patron, you help generate a regular income for this podcast, which means I can turn down other work to focus on this. And I can also travel to go and meet the best flute players in the world and get them on just for you guys. So as a thank you for doing that, You'll get to put your questions to these guys before anyone else, and you'll also get early access to episodes before anyone else does. So, if you can afford it, it is hugely appreciated that you go and sign up, and you can unsubscribe at any time with no cost. If you can't afford it, that's okay. You can listen for free. It's grand. So, without further ado, this week's guest on the Inline G Flute Podcast is Polish flute superstar, Berlin Philharmonic Karyan Academy graduate, frequent orchestral principal flutist, chamber musician, recording artist, and wannabe Swiss train conductor, Zofia Neugebauer. Um, very first thing I want to ask you, do you play, I can see obviously, but for the audio listeners, do you play Inline G or Offset G? I play an Offset G. Why? I... <laughs> <laughs> Cancel the interview. That's it. We're done. No, no, I'm <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Yes. Okay. Why do we you play all Uh Well, you know, I mean, I just somebody gave it to me, and that was not even a discussion. Okay. Have you ever considered switching? No. Or just you happy enough? Yes, I I did because I think there was one flute uh, that I wanted to play. It was like um, I was no, actually no, no. No? No. Have you tried playing inline G for a while at any point? Have you ever played on inline G? Has it always been offset? Always offset. Okay. Um, um, this one. Yeah, so <laughs> there one time there was when Emmanuel, uh, while my academy, he gave me his flute. Emmanuel Baby, we were talking Emmanuel about. Baby. I'm just clarifying that he one. He gave me <laughs> his flute. He borrowed me because I had to, he lent it to me yeah, like for, for right. like a few weeks. So that I could, yeah, I know. Yeah, when borrowed I was, Emmanuel Baby's flute. Yeah, come that's okay. On, when he was giving me this flute, I was like... Yeah, it's like getting the Excalibur, it's like getting the sword. Yes, like, oh. really, but truly, honestly. Am I the chosen one? It was exactly like this. I was going home. Is it super clean as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It was his Heinz that was there with Faulisi head joint. Oh. I think it's all different different gold in this oh, flute, wow, okay. you know, like okay. the the lip plate, so the lip plate was, I think, like 18 carats, okay. the head joint was 24, the whole flute was also 18 carats, yeah. the keys were something else, it's like, it was like such a beautiful <sighs> instrument, uh, so when he he gave me his flute for some time, then it was in G, okay. so that was, I was and that was fine, yeah, he plays in line G, doesn't he? Right? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. so, I mean, 
Yeah, I think that was one of the points I made about it was Pau, Hompal, and Galway all played in 9G. Oh. So I thought, yeah, that must be right then. But okay, I have you I don't it's know fine. why. Okay. No, well, you're actually the first. I have no idea what's the difference, honestly. I think you're the first guest that plays off. No, Gary what? Shocker plays offset as well. I think it's also like the French love in 9G. But what, what do you feel the sound difference, though? No. 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 <laughs> I like it because I think it looks a little bit prettier because it's all in line. But then also I'm a guy, yeah, so well, I have bigger honestly, hands. Yeah, if I, but don't don't make me come back to my because like, if you say it now, now, now I'm gonna have OCD. <laughs> no, you're gonna switch, yeah. No, I'm gonna, <laughs> no. no, I'm gonna have my OCD and I'm just gonna be there looking no, at my flute fine, all the time. <laughs> you do have a beautiful like, flute. Though. Oh, so no. what kind of flute do you play? I know, obviously, but. I play Muramatsu Heavy Wall, so and I think that's the the S model, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, right? I think so. Or because S R is the thin wall, just a symbol. Yeah, the simple. S, the X is not so I, I don't know. It's somewhere here. No, it's written heavy. And so then heavy gold. wall because it's a bit like thicker. And then um, I, I'm in love with my head joint. It's is Lafon. Oh, you have a La Femme head joint, oh, yeah. And I love it. Yeah, they are it's, gorgeous. I love them so much. All of them, really. Many. How long have you had this flute? Uh, now, so I started, I got it on my first year of studies. That would be eight years ago. Okay. And you're not considering switching? You're very Nine happy. Nine years ago. No, I love it so much. Unless... Do you want to tell everybody what happened? <laughs> you want to... <laughs> oh, we can cut this out if you want happens to everyone sometimes so it's happened to me many times <laughs> to me but i'm obviously we love our instruments right yeah, we, but... so i feel like my, my baby is sick this day yeah. today my baby yeah. got sick today and it urgently <laughs> needs to go to the doctor uh, yeah by the time again. this podcast comes out your fruit will be fine this yeah. comes out in a few weeks oh, it'll be yeah. fine i hope so you'll be God. telling everyone how great your fruit either is i have to buy a whole new i doubt it right you think but... so I don't yeah. know. So for the listeners, I met Sophia yeah, like what, what happened? two hours ago mm. and you were just come out of the rehearsal. We're in Luxembourg, by the way. I didn't even say we're in Luxembourg. Yeah. We're in Luxembourg. You were in a rehearsal yeah. and then you came out and you said you were quite panicked. and You're like, yeah, I've had an issue with my flute. Well, I cried for the half of a moment. <laughs> yeah. That's also... To be fair, it is. It's a bit of a serious issue, but you can maybe play through it for now. But yeah, essentially the bottom. Yeah, you want to hear? Joint, you want to hear? Yeah, what happens? Mm-hmm. Can you play something? Yeah. Go show us. So guess the scale. <laughs> <laughs> I'll close my eyes so I'm not cheating <laughs> yeah okay that's less than I did yeah but it'll be fine so the thing is that the whole C sharp <laughs> I really hope the camera's picking that up crooked. I'll take a picture Probably of it and I'll not. put it up afterwards yeah that's what everyone can see oh my baby but it happens yeah it happens it'll get fixed soon um, yeah, yeah. I'm very serious about my flute, obviously. Oh, we all are. Yeah, it's a gorgeous yeah. instrument too. It so, just, right, we have to keep going. Like, I would, I would talk is. about that the entire podcast, but we can't. I've got, I've got questions to get through. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. Question number two. Oh, first of all, I did listen to your episode with Flute Space. Mm-hmm. So, anyone that listens to both podcasts, go listen to that one first because Aww. we're gonna. I'm gonna ask questions that aren't in their podcast, so I'm not looking like I'm copying them. But it is a very good episode. Um, but what did I hear in that podcast? Ah, yeah. So, you did say on there, you don't often get a chance to stop and look back at the success you've achieved and that your friends have to remind you. Like, so how far you've came. I think they had said something about, they had talked about how great you were and the list of achievements you've had. And you're like, yeah, I never actually thought about that. Is that still the case? Do you still sort of, is it gig after gig, concert after concert? Do you ever stop and think, oh, wow, yeah, I'm doing this now? What I am always stopping is like, oh, I'm I'm really enjoying. Yeah. You know, or like when I get to play the first rehearsal of like Iber Concerto and I just played. Which and, was what, like last week? Yeah, last week. <sighs> and then you start hearing the really, the music that comes up. Yeah. And then with my whole heart, I'm really just when you feel the the orchestra starting to play and you stand there in the front and then I feel like then I feel I am so grateful that I could experience this because I know not many people have this experience to play. um, Well, not yet all these concertos, but like some of these concertos with the orchestra and kind of be blessed so much to 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 share what you feel like playing yeah. it 
with all this what the composer had in his mind yeah so that's when i am always like so grateful and i i really like always this first rehearsal i am like really it's happening i can yeah. i can i can enjoy it and i can what was the first rehearsal like when the orchestra because obviously the orchestra starts what they have two bars at the start of the e break and turn yeah. and then it's a couple of bars and you straight in I think the first time I, if I ever played that with an orchestra, the first time you rehearsed it, you'd be like, oh, it's happening. Yeah. Was it cool or were you okay with it? Was it like the very first time they started playing the intro? How did it feel? I am always, I am not really scared to play with orchestra solo ever. Okay, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am very, I'm a bit more stressed out to play in the orchestra yeah okay solo. as a solo yeah as a principal Be flute yeah. because because that is obviously um, but i i love both of those things but i feel like i have a little bit maybe less responsibility when i play solo really you know? mm -hmm. okay because in some ways i rely on just on myself yeah, yeah i don't i don't uh yeah you don't feel like you're letting the team down maybe if you play no yeah or like y you are just you are uh you're working on your own success of that situation yeah, yeah. not success of the flute playing yeah, but yeah. on the success of that situation Artistry, yeah yeah so if and i trust myself kind of yeah i can tell like, yeah. i like That's it really cool. you yeah. know like i uh, i am not like um i'm I, I trust myself that i try to really do my best at that moment and yeah. i um, i'm prepared and you know i i work on the piece and yeah. i'm enjoying it so yeah who likes it likes it who doesn't doesn't great it was so great but but what i realized funny because it's logic and obvious the how air is important in playing flute well i mean wow yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but what did you realize differently like what was the it was the just revelation? The, the 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 breath it's, it's also for me teaching because yeah. i i love to teach and uh, yeah. I, I have few students and I am very much enjoying this journey of supporting them on their development and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but how important is to have a good breath? I mean, I know it's it, maybe for me it was mm -hmm. just a little bit. I was taking it a little bit f for granted already. Yeah. Okay. Because you work on it since you're small. Yeah. And at some point you don't realize. You just maybe, don't think about it anymore. No. Yeah. No. Okay. And luckily, I had always like some kind of like quite nice sound yeah. like from nature let's yeah. say i didn't i mean i, yeah, I worked can, yeah. on it like crazy and i was obsessed about it blah, blah, blah. so that's not only just whatever but yeah. um somehow the, the the i think the physical the mental like the imagination yeah. thing that you have was making me already take a good breath okay it, okay so you would yeah sense. you were naturally just doing well like then, yeah. naturally breathing quite okay uh -huh. i think like um so i was never really like working on it too much I, was just, I just blasted it off you know and yeah stopped thinking about it i went on stage i'm like i'm totally fine yeah. i'm doing my show yeah i mean not show but yeah you know what i mean like i'm going there like beyonce would go on stage you i know? need to ask you about this okay <laughs> sorry i'm sorry to interrupt you but i i made a note because i re-listened to the fruit space episode again today to sort of refresh my memory and you had said in it, one of your pre-performance rituals was you listened to beyonce yeah. but you didn't say which song so she has this song like spirit uh, from the there's many ones mm -hmm. but the one that she uh gave she released album last year about the lion king stuff. oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and there haven't is, listened to it but i know what um it. and there is uh, this song it's like a three no it was not last year it was like four or five years ago okay. that she released this album uh, like five years and that's ago. been your song for the that's last few years for last five every years. gig yeah like or if nice. i don't play it out then i have it in my head because yeah okay the, the lyrics are so pretty it's like you know like your destiny and yeah, yeah you're doing your thing and, you, get, and yeah. you go there with the purpose and the the energy yeah. of the world is supporting you I in that, that moment though. i mean it makes me feel mm -hmm. so in line with my idea like yeah. at that po at the moment that it makes me feel like i'm doing something important you are, you are obviously you're sharing your art with the world but if you were going to listen to it like actually listen to it is it right before you go on stage or is it like in the dressing room and half an hour before or literally like five minutes before you have headphones no that 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 would be right before stage well, right wow, before okay, i nice. go 
But yeah. I, I have it in my head. And if I don't listen to it physically, it's going then somewhere. it's like rolling in my head, you know? That is so cool, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you have any other pre-performance, like rituals or routines or anything you do? Or superstitions? Mm, no, superstitions not. Oh, uh, really? Dark. Oh, I want to get one food player on this who does have a superstition. Either they all have them and they just don't want to admit it, or none of them do. And I find it do so weird. I have... Are Polish people not famously superstitious as well? Are they? Yeah, I thought they were. Well, I have Polish friends back home and they hmm. have a lot of superstitions. Yeah, let me think. Let me think. I don't want to give you one either. Like, you don't need to have one. It's, no, not, it's not obligatory. I'm thinking. We, we, yeah, we were just talking as well. Like, do you drink oh, coffee yeah. before you perform? Or do you eat or drink anything in particular? Uh, well, I try to drink a lot of water. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Just to, you know, be like mentally also and, and physically somehow fit. Uh, but coffee right before not. Yeah, that might be a wee bit much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe because that's my superstition. That's maybe it. No, that's, that's actually... <laughs> that's my that's, superstition if I drink, but I don't think it makes sense, different. Though. Do I, I don't think it changes much in my playing or in anything. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. A coffee just before stage might push me too far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, would, I think I might get a bit the too much. The stage would explode. Yeah, yeah. The adrenaline's already there. The fingers are already a little bit shaky if I start taking <laughs> coffee on top of that. Like, I wouldn't have a monster energy before I go on stage. No. Sorry. That's the last thing I need. Um, oh, I need to find someone with a good superstition. I should ask people about that. Okay, we need to move on. So, Eber went well. Mm. I do want to ask you about, I was just talking about it before, your Mozart CD. Oh, yeah. So, what's the latest news on that? It's recorded and stuff, isn't it? Yes, it's recorded. It's going through the last mastering uh, phase right now. I might want to add, record a um, few bits still. Yeah. Um, but not with the orchestra one, like 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 polishing of the cadenzas and stuff, okay. just to make it the way I really really want, uh, because I realize that the cadenzas are not maybe exactly what I want to share right now again. Okay. Um. So I think I would re-record some parts of the cadenza or the cadenzas. Yeah. Uh, and it should go out this year. It's so exciting. Yeah. Can I ask? Okay, you don't have to answer this, but there is a video of you playing yes. the Mozart Concertos with the same conductor who's on the record. Yeah, Johannes mm -hmm. Klump. Um, it was. I didn't. I tried to do some research on this. So when you play the opening of the first movement yes. of the G Major Concerto, yeah, dum 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 dum, you do this. Bum ba bum yeah. ba bum ba. Is that like a stylistic thing? Yes. Okay. So is that like period accurate? Is that the way yeah. they would have done it? Okay. Yeah. Was that important to you to like study how to play in the correct, like the correct style, the accurate style? Well, I mean, for me, I think at some point in the beginning, it was actually it was Johannes' idea. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, because Johannes is like very much into Mozart. Like he's like, I love to say like this kind of things like Mozart specialist. You know mm. what I mean? Like he's so obsessed about Mozart, yeah. and he is very much into his, um, the research and and also working with uh, people like Reinhard Goebel. You know. I don't. Reinhard Goebel is like a very important uh, conductor and okay. a musician in field of Baroque music. Okay, cool. And like the historically in front performances yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. He was, I think Reinhard Goebel was uh, before also this uh, very important Baroque school in Berlin. Okay. He was like okay. a director, I think. Okay. Like, in any case, he's some kind of specialist. But yeah. he is like uh, someone who who made a lot of research about this and he suggested that mm. like because he came out with the idea so this is the orchestra is Wolfgang Kammerorchester Essen yeah really nice orchestra yeah. really nice one like the guys are so um they they really share the passion for the music yeah. uh, okay. with you on stage and they are very yeah, they are just so passionate about what they are doing. They really love to play together. And then, you know, when you feel the orchestra wanting to play together, then, and then yeah. you play with them. Brings the energy, yeah. And they love the conductor. And we all love Johannes conducting with his, like, crazy energy, you know? Yeah, well, you can see that in the video. He's very yeah. energetic. I love he's, that. He's very excited and for a certain type of music. But but then when the, it's, like, very spiritual and dark, and, like, Mozart can be also like yeah. this. I mean, not the oh, flute yeah. concertos, I believe. But uh, in, in, in some of the operas or some of the symphonies, they are also like... Yeah. 
Yeah, especially when Mozart writes in like D minor. I always find when Mozart writes in D minor, things are going to get dark. Yeah. I think Don Giovanni's overture is in D minor. There's a D minor piano concerto. Anything like that's really cool. I right? love that side of Mozart, yeah. Yeah, so obviously there is that side to Mozart too. And so then, then he can also show a lot of... Um, depth yeah. to for for me the most important is that he really cares about that music and yeah. so he reached out to me if he oh, would cool. like to, if i would love to record mozart concertos with them mm-hmm. i was obviously very grateful yeah is it both concertos both Whoa, nice. yeah it's so exciting <laughs> i get very excited for it i wish it was out now <laughs> so yeah are you going to be doing you don't have to tell me, but are you going to be doing the same thing then with the... Uh, yeah. Is that the same? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you know, actually, just before I met you today, I was on the phone to a friend of mine who just finished her... She's doing a PhD in Baroque flute uh-huh. at the Royal Academy of Music. Mm-hmm. Royal College of Music, sorry, excuse yeah. me. Um, And I sent her the video of you doing it because I wanted to see, like, is that a stylistic yeah, thing? Yeah. She's like, oh, I don't really know. I'm more Baroque and another classical. But she was like, I love it. Whatever. She uh, was like, it's a, and she's... Not always the biggest fan of modern flute playing, but uh-huh. she loved your version. Really? So you've got that on board at least. It was like it was so light and it was so energetic and it was so energetic. Like, oh, yeah. cool. So there you are. There's one person at least who plays Baroque flute and thinks it's amazing. Perfect. Yeah. I know that also just to because I had no idea, uh-huh. but um, I have a few approval. You know, it's just like obviously we don't need approval, but when you hear oh, approval yeah. from another flutist, yeah. then you're hey. like, okay. Who gave you so drop well, some names. Well, um, <laughs> there was a, there is a a friend of mine that was studying oh, last year with Jacques Zun. Oh, I love Jacques. And Jacques was telling them to play Triam Teka Triam Teka Triam. Oh, really? Okay. But then they were like, oh, you know, but for the audition is maybe not the perfect way, which is everyone. I understand. It's like a big big topic, whatever. It is. Yeah. But. I know that Jacques Zun was teaching his students like this too, uh, from the first ah. source last year. Okay. And, uh, but on Jacques Zun on his CD. Yeah, because he does have a Mozart he CD. He does no. not play like this, which is obviously like it's. I think changing the you know yeah, the, the research, yeah. the schools, yeah. the the Baroque schools yeah. are a little bit more open again, like the. I studied in Basel. In Basel is like Scola Cantorum Basiliensis, is oh, like course, very yeah. important yeah. Uh, uh, place for the Baroque. My teacher Felix, he recorded I know, Felix a lot Henry, yeah. of like things on Traverso. He loves it yeah. too. And yeah, you're I, right. The I research was is studying changing, with so. Mark Hantai also for ah, a year in cool. Basel. Like I had some lessons with him too, um, and. Um, and what aha and Jacques Zun was this and also I uh, did Philippe Racine in, in, in Zurich oh yeah, uh, yeah he told me that he really loved this recording and he's so happy to see something a little bit different but it's not different because of being different right no it's no. yeah so the Johannes uh, obviously like Johannes Klump yeah uh, he came out with this idea and at the first I was like hmm do I want to put my first CD like that there? It is a big change. Yeah, it's... I am me. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I, I don't, don't care what yeah. people think. Yeah, well, why should you? Yeah. And so far it's all good. So Plus, I mean, I, plus obviously it, it's not only this. It's just, um, it is, stylistically, the idea is the, the it's called Dactylus Rhythm. Okay. And Dactylus Rhythm is uh, when it's written this uh, short notes. Yeah. Yam, ta-dam, ta-dam, yeah. ta-dam, yam, ta-dam, triam, ta-dam, yes. ta-dam, ta-dam. This is this. And the idea behind it is that, tell me why we should play the same notation. Um, yeah. The same notation, uh, not the same. Different tell, notation. Why do we play different two notations the same? I don't get it. Well, I because heard a reason why, but I don't know if it's true or not. Because Mozart was lazy to write and... Uh... <laughs> no, well, sort of. What I had heard is because it always sort of lands on when the first note, the appoggiatura, isn't in the harmony. Mm-hmm. And when Mozart would have written it down or any one of that era, the copiers who were writing for the orchestra would have looked at it and went, that must be a mistake because it's a D and like a C yeah. harmony. So he writes as a little one to say, it's not a mistake, it's just that. 
I don't know if that's true or not, right. or someone just told me that in the pub. Obviously, there's many <laughs> different theories. That's the thing. But don't take my theory seriously. No, I have no idea. I mean, if I that's mean right many, or not. many, many people play like this, and why do we play it? There must be a reason for it. But why it is we good, always yeah, play like this. Yeah, it's good to ask right? why. But when you compare many different score of Mozart, like yeah. the um, the the operas and stuff like that, mm. then you can also see. Um, how different uh, so Yo- we were sitting with Johannes and he was showing me all the parts of different operas oh, how good. how the Mozart was oh, right so, so it didn't come up from from just I yeah, want to no, play no. Tiam Takasiam but it um, it came out from all the or the different comparisons of different okay. Mozart uh, repertoire yeah right yeah and um, and uh, wait let me think because I got lost in my thoughts right now don't worry, we can cut it. Yeah. Sure. Or, <laughs> or I can talk over the top as well. We can put an advert in here. Monster Energy want to sponsor me? <laughs> this is the moment where the advert Hello. comes in. <laughs> Thank you very much, Monster. Um, <laughs> so what I was saying, aha, the, the short notes and stuff. Um, so also Leopold Mozart wrote that big book about big book about interpretation of yes. music. Yeah. And well, Mozart was they they were he was so annoyed that it's not like um categorized okay. it's not it's not clarified yeah, actually yeah. in the end okay. right so why then also Mozart would be actually confusing for the people again I don't think that yeah. he was that messy. People say like, okay, Mozart was messy, so he was making mistakes because he wanted to write things faster. Yeah, that feels like a caricature. I don't know if that's right? true or not. Yeah. For me, it's a little bit like... There's a lot of things like that with why, Mozart why that was there. Why would he write it? Why, why, what is the difference? I don't think... If I think he you're just right, yeah. writes normal... Me, I, I write notes. Yeah. To write a short note... It's more difficult it for more me time. to write an yeah, eight note. Definitely. So therefore, in comparison with all the rest of the repertoire and all of his write, handwriting and all of that, then you can find out That's that I don't think that those things should be played exactly the same. Yeah. But Mozart wrote them differently. Therefore, I believe that they should be played differently. Yeah. And also in different parts of the repertoire, you can compare those stuff. Out and yeah. and there is not like unified way of playing yeah. them. Um, and, uh, and also to put on top of that, like the character of it. I love it. I love the character. It, is, it, it's super uh, it adds light. to the the <clears throat> articulation very... of, of strings also yeah. to the mood. It just gives to that the... little lift. Yeah. yeah to I the, do like that, to yeah. Tonalities and <clears throat> and then yes, of course you can also listen a lot to the repertoire of people like Reinhard Goebel, for example, mm. or um uh, Ton Kopman. Oh yeah, that one. You know, know yeah. <laughs> or uh, all this like Baroque uh, crazy lovers, yeah, and and they use this dactylus rhythm yeah. uh, interpretation. And to, uh, and my friend was playing with Reinhard Goebel also clarinet concerto. Ah, the Mozart, yeah, Mozart clarinet concerto, and he suggested oh, him to to play like this too. Ah, so okay. you know, it's not like unusual practice. Yeah, it is a practice that people do, and then obviously we are just playing music, and yeah. you can do whatever you want. You to can. Do. <laughs> well, not yeah, not whatever you want. But I mean, you can. But technically, you could, yeah. You totally can. That's the whole thing. Like, obviously, you choose not to, or you choose to do. You can even make. Mm. Uh, you can even make a pop song out of Bach Partita, no? I would love to, yeah. <laughs> Somebody already did. True. I actually, I have heard that there is, there's like a dance song or something da, da, with the da, flute. Da, 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 there is, da. there is, uh, yeah. And my brother, he... That's kind of cool as well. My brother, he doesn't know Partita. And but he knows said, that. when I was practicing at home, he comes to me, you know, <laughs> like a younger brother thing. Yeah. You know? I practice this da, 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 da. And he opens the door, he's like, uh. <laughs> he's like, oh, I know that one cool well i'm really excited for it coming out i really am i'm looking forward to it a lot uh what's next oh yeah that's quite a nice moment to to sort of bring that in um yeah i wrote down here that you do seem like you're very concerned more concerned with expressing a good musical message as opposed to just being a good flute player it seems like that's much more important to you and i feel like that's something that a lot of people struggle with is where are we in the line between being technicians and just playing the instrument or artists 
where do you view yourself do you see yourself as an artist or do you see yourself as like your job is to play what the composer does or how much of the flute is important to you do you know what i mean yeah uh -huh, i see i didn't word that in the best way but you know what i mean yeah yeah i know exactly what you mean well mm, what i don't uh, like to put like stamps or on anything you know like yeah. on on um, even if you said like artists or um, I don't want to be like fakely humble or anything like this but um, before when you said about success and it's just I'm just being me you know yeah, yeah. I'm just being me as as a, as me can. being a person yeah and I am also like in my I love to always be kind of an environment of my own family because none of them is really an artist oh you have no musical are, family no nobody and not like not musical and also pretty um you know i i come from a very small city yeah. and people live like a very simple everyday life yeah and they have their own struggles like a very very human experience life simple I totally that, yeah. but also very sensitive yeah. um, environment I grew up in in my home everyone is very sensitive very open to talk and very emotional very okay. open for emotions yeah. so that, that's kind of stuff but um, if funny wise they consider me sometimes like with, with I'm flying in the clouds I totally you know what get I mean that, yeah. because oh yeah I my mom is always like but why do you have to think about so many things you know <laughs> or like or, yeah yeah, or yeah. She, and oh, sometimes I, I call her and she's like oh but why do you why, why do you even yeah. why do you even like overthink this just things that much it. just don't think about this and I'm like hmm, you want to be in my head yeah you know I have the exact same problem not problem I have the same situation yeah like, it's I come just, from a very it, small town so yeah people always view me as a bit like crazy and a bit like artistry and yeah it's, I don't feel like that but I do think it's good to be from that kind of background because it gives you a lot of lessons about just like being grounded and maybe yeah. it's not that big a deal like I think that's something that's very nice for me is when I play music or do anything artisty I sort of think it's not that big a deal like we're just playing music like it's lovely and it's wonderful but it's not the most important thing in the world and I'm reminded like my family know they don't view it as that kind of thing yeah. it's just like oh. and in the same time so that's the that's the that's like the the, the way that I think about myself as a human here on okay. doing stuff uh, yeah. whatever what it is uh, and on one hand really nothing matters and yeah. you could just disappear tomorrow and <laughs> some people would cry a little bit or not i mean i'm sure I so, yes <laughs> and it would be you know but but the life goes on and the the, the, yeah. the earth is here and, and it never yeah um, there's something very comforting about that and in the same time as uh, people that are sensitive we have this power of actually changing our reality and mm -hmm. changing the reality of other people yeah too and influencing others with the things that we do but uh, my friend recently i have a very good friend uh, thierry and he wrote something like of uh, so i have responsibility for my creative ideas just as they are those creative ideas hanging somewhere in the air or yeah. like being in me so i feel this responsibility to just take those things out just for them okay yeah just so they can just so they can uh, be as ideas growing in their own reality and yeah. then every human has their own life and then we are put on this planet in some some way existing together kind of being in this um trying to survive and and to expand our species i don't know i don't know yeah but but so as a flute flute is for me obviously just like um I think that I love that I feel like is with me every day and and um, gives me possibilities to I think have my own space of something yeah you know? so I think I treat flute a little bit more as a personal thing to me but is it this flute specifically like do you think you could have that with another instrument if you just happen to play another instrument yeah yeah it's not specific like obviously you play the flute but if you were a clarinet player it could be the same thing yeah Clarinet, I'm not sure. Maybe but... not. Okay. <laughs> I love the clarinet. That's my second favorite. Yeah, good, good, nice. 
<laughs> we'll cut that. I mean, me too. Uh, we'll cut that. We'll cut that. Leave that in. Throw I mean, the clarinet too. Players. No, I What would you play if you I didn't know. play the flute? I would play. I love cello. Oh, really? Okay. I love cello. I love sound of cello. I love all the melodies that cellists have in the symphonies. See, yeah. Oh my god, come on. Um, yeah, hmm. that's why I like. But that's why I like the clarinet. I Tchaikovsky. love all the like Mozart clarinet stuff. Mm, nice. Yeah, <laughs> I love the, the clarinet. Always and the very horn. Funny. Oh, really? Yeah, I love horn. I'm not sure if I would love to be a horn player and practice so much. And yeah. Be kind of like freaked you have out. Have to carry everything. it everywhere as well. It's very heavy. At least so the flute's nice also. and light. Yeah. But I would, I mean, ultimately, ultimately, like, first of all, I would be a singer. I was going to say, I thought you could be a singer, yeah. Yeah. Like classical singer, like an opera, operatic. Anything. I don't yeah. know. I or don't Beyonce. Think, I think, oh, to Beyonce. <laughs> you would do both, yeah. No, I mean. <laughs> don't worry, we've got it. <laughs> no, I'm going to keep it all in. <laughs> keep it all in or whatever. No, no, I would love to. I would love to. I, I, I have, <sighs> I do singing lessons and I was doing singing do competitions when I was smaller. Wow, do you still yeah. do you still do singing lessons now? Uh, there is on YouTube a video of me singing. There is yeah. none. Yeah, when How I was did like I not 12 find years that? old. On your YouTube or just someone else's YouTube? Someone else's YouTube. What was the occasion? Was it like a the TV occasion? show or was it just No, a... we had like a concert of like uh with, with I mean in the in the city. And like, it's still on YouTube? Yeah. I'm going to find it. Yeah. I'll definitely go looking. I um, I'm, I'm a big diva there. Really? Yeah. Like you know all this attitude and then the flute took over <laughs> and you were telling me the reason you picked up the flute as well this isn't even in my list I'm just saying it um, yeah. was because you saw guards at school who had a nice pretty flute bag yeah. and you thought that's the that's the only well not the only reason they but... were so cool <laughs> and that, those girls and that was it you were yeah, like because I, I was be playing like I was playing piano earlier when okay. I was like five I started with the piano because my cousin was playing piano and then after a few years I was practicing a lot with my mom at home and my mom was helping me to practice okay. the piano we had like a grand piano at oh, home lovely. wow luckily we got from some a friend of a friend you know nice. like a okay. beautiful old instrument yes we have to play it then yeah and then um then piano was available so i could uh, play piano but i also really wanted to play piano and then when i was mm -hmm. like nine i just realized that uh, i I couldn't really get uh, along with my piano teacher. Oh, okay. She, yeah. After after like four years playing, she had she wanted me to do so competitions and okay, and yeah. I had I had to be in competition with my friends somehow in a weird yeah. way. Yeah. And all of that didn't really suit me at all. And I'm since a small child, I was always like very um um. If you would tell me that I have to do something, you I'm like it. immediately not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. Okay. So I, I'm collaborate like collaboration. I uh, like that. Like have let's have some fun. Let's learn. I'm dedicated. I work and yeah. all this kind of stuff. Yes, but if you tell me that I have to do something, but I really don't feel it. Yeah, just don't push. That natural like, rebellion. It's gonna yeah, yeah. <laughs> kick off. You That's know? cool. Though. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> have you still kept that? You're still like that. Yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's not always the way. I have to work on that too. As a, okay, well, you know? I think it's cool. But yeah. so yeah, well, so you so play then, piano and then and then in the music school <laughs> there was like a very beautiful girl. Also, that uh, I don't remember her name right now, but she was like a bit taller. And um, does she still play the flute? Do you know her still? No, no, no. She stopped. She stopped. Oh, have playing, you told like, her this story? No. no oh, no, you should yeah, tell I, her. I don't remember her name. I don't remember oh, her. Maybe she's watching. <laughs> maybe she's watching maybe now. Maybe we can I think <laughs> somewhere. I think she must be somewhere around my city, obviously, because we grew up there. So, and then this girl was so beautiful, and they were all cool girls, and those flute bags, and I really wanted to be that person. <laughs> so that was <laughs> it. Like, I want a flute, and that's it. I want to play flute. That's such a cool way to start the flute. I like mean, but but because I wanted to stop playing music yeah. school at in the music school at yeah home. but my dad my dad was um oh, maybe there's someone at your door wait one sec coca-cola can also sponsor us oh i wish man the, the, <laughs> there's so much money no yeah right i don't say no everything is possible yeah coca-cola sponsoring that'd Coca be a good sponsor no no but we don't want it in africa shit no true and also it's not good for the flute either no 
I was always told. <laughs> do we? Do we? He's like, do we care? Yeah, well, true. Yeah, I know. Like, Obviously, yeah, that's we don't care. Like, like, monster energy is totally fine. Yeah, for sure. Monster. <laughs> Look, Coca Cola wouldn't be bad. It would be bad. Yeah, probably would. I do need to get a sponsor though. I don't know who I'm gonna get. If anyone's listening that wants to give me money, all, of, more the, all of, of them. <laughs> all of them. Yeah. A sponsor all of them like, look we're traveling across the world here i'm in luxembourg for the first time doing the podcast this is yeah you're doing a very good professional the, podcast you are doing good to the flute world yeah it's I it's mean, essential to it's the classical a, music and exactly yeah okay i don't love that cup bye bye cup unless the cup company wants to sponsor us in which, <laughs> which case the cup, cup can company stay. ikea you could be no I, I can go to ikea and ask them for sponsorship we yeah. could record episodes in ikea or make concerts classical music concerts in ikea and people sitting on these beds and maybe there's like a concert do you want to do it now should we just, we go? Should we just go? <laughs> we go to ikea now i feel like you would do that though you would just, yeah you're being serious i, I just was thinking about yeah. it right now that yeah. like ikea salon concerts hey isn't it a great idea <laughs> that is actually a really good it's idea it's like taking interesting people like a new public and everything we do need to make sure we trademark this like we copyright it so if anyone else gets this idea they have to pay us because that was your idea and i'm getting 50 percent of it because it was on my podcast <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a bit of that. Um, anyway, where were we? We were telling about the story dad. about your... Yeah, when, when I was nine, I <laughs> told my parents that I don't want to go to music school anymore because I want to actually hang Be out with kids. <laughs> ah, yeah. And you have know, a normal like, life as well, yeah. Yeah, no, because of course, like when you finish school at two and then you go directly to music school and then at four yeah. there's rhythmic when you are like you know clapping rhythms yeah. it's all fun i loved it i loved yeah. it but of course part of it it was uh, like all of us know part of it it was just like another part of school and there were exams and there were yeah. uh, things that you had to do another homework and it was obviously big part love and fun but some parts of it were just like how about i go outside and play football yeah you know, you know? Yeah. Actually, well, this is the first time this is going to happen in this podcast. It's a beautiful segue. Can we talk about football? Yeah. Because I never get to talk about football in this podcast, but <laughs> I have a reason today because your brother is a professional footballer. Yeah. And he plays for Lechia Gdansk. Is he still there? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and he also plays for the Polish national team. Yep. I follow him on Instagram. I'm, oh, I was yeah. really hoping we could get like a... Does he speak English? Yes, he does. We could do like a joint podcast because I also have a football podcast. <laughs> So yeah, make sure you get. We'll get a group together. We'll do football, flute. We'll get the whole lot. But yeah, your brother's he's, a footballer. Yeah, he's now in Turkey training for the new season. Like okay. they have this like camp before oh, they start, God. like two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Do you go to the matches to watch him? Yes, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah do you I have a? It. Do you support a football team? We well, have no. to say let's get good answer now. Barcelona. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Barcelona. Yeah. Why? Well, Lewandowski and my brother is like. Oh yeah, Lewandowski. Yeah. Fair like enough. my my no. brother, he he. I kind of like Paris Saint Germain because they have the Neymar and he's gonna. <laughs> Neymar. But Neymar's gone now. <laughs> Is he gone he's already? In Saudi now? Arabia now. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, but yeah. that they say so. Not the team, but and it's not that Neymar is someone I really, really like. Oh, yeah. But I found his attitude kind of like a bad boy, interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, do you relate to that? Do you, you want to be a, a bad boy as well in the like, classical music world? Yeah. <laughs> but genuinely, do you not find, like, I have talked about this in the podcast before, but I feel like. Ronaldo, I really like Messi, I love a yeah. lot. But Ronaldo, I, I watched. I'm sorry, a little bit more Ronaldo as well. Yeah. I mean, me, yeah. I don't have a side on those. But about Ronaldo, I read a bit more and I listened to a bit more interviews okay. and all this kind of stuff. And I think he's just so inspiring, hard worker. Oh my god! Exactly. I this is what I'm about to say because I think there's so many similarities between music and sport. Yeah. There's so many, and I feel like we don't talk about it enough because no? usually, well, classical musicians, it's rare that they also like sport. It's usually mm. two very different things: arts and sports. Okay. Um, but I wish more people did. For like, <laughs> I've read. Have you read any like the sports psychology books or any of those kind of stuff? I always yeah. find fat. It's like it's just music. There was yes. one I read called The Inner Game of Tennis. Oh, yeah. They actually did a music version of it as well. They what? Re yeah, they did a second one called The Inner Game of Music. I didn't like it as much. I didn't read that But one. The Inner Game of Tennis was incredible. Yes. And if you change the word tennis to music, it all applies. It's Beautiful the exact same book. thing. Beautiful book. Have you read it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, changed, it changed a lot of the way I teach. Really? Okay. Yeah, I think it's important for every teacher to read that. I mean, obviously, oh, look at me. Yeah. Like, telling people what to do. No, no that's why you're care. on the podcast. <laughs> you should tell people no, what to do. But, uh, but I think that this book changed, uh, like, 
I didn't want to teach before. Really? Okay. Now. Because you seem like you love it so much now. Yes, because I found exactly the way that I can kind of not tell people what to do. Okay. But guide them a little because I don't yeah. hate, I don't like it myself okay. when I tell people what to yeah. do. Uh, yeah. well, no, the other way. I really when don't tell, like yeah. when someone tells me, like, I don't like so much in general in anything when people are like, I know. And yeah. now I'm going to tell you Why, how yeah. to do things, like whatever what it is, to play flute yeah. or to uh, be healthy or to Anything, make yeah. your career or whatever what. Yeah. I don't know because okay. I am like, do you know really? Yeah. You know, I'm always like, you really know? So is that and a big some, part of your Some people are well? like, yes, yes, yeah. totally. It's like my biggest base. I, okay. I am always very open. I'm just, it's so, it's such a concept what we are doing. Yeah. People are like coming to me and they're like, okay, I have audition in two months. Could you work yeah. with me on Mozart concerto and some excerpts? Yeah. And then I'm like, oh yes, of course, I'm super happy to do this. And, and I do and, but actually what are we doing? Okay. Uh, we are like uh, playing Mozart concerto, learning what how to do it for certain reason you know it's all such an abstract thing it for is me, yeah you when know? you think about it yeah. when you sit with someone so so what i try to do i do this because i need i we all need it and i think it's important to learn some basics and to know the historical background of certain things and the yeah. composer's ideas and all of this kind of thing. I yeah. have a big respect to that. Yeah. But also, you could just take it all and do whatever uh, yeah. you want to. Like, I totally agree you know with that. I mean? yeah. yeah, totally agree with that. Um, you can go, uh, as we said, you can take a Mozart concerto and go and make a pop song out of it. Yeah. Can you not? You well, can. Suppose, yeah, of you course can. you can. Yeah. I mean, you can do whatever you want to. I totally agree, yeah. Yeah. Uh, not my vibe i wouldn't do it yeah but if you want to do it i would go you know i, I mean and i cheer you up i maybe i will not love it but if you want to do it i'm going to support, you, support. you full on i think that's a big role with a teacher i think that's really really important that you just support your students um yeah one thing i always have with my teaching is i wouldn't say i want my students not to sound like me but i don't i I'm kind of happy when they don't sound like the way I do it. Like yeah. if I show them, I was like, I would do this. And they go, okay, I'll try that. And then they go, no, I don't want to do it. I'm like, mm. yes, yeah. yes, why not? Make your own mind up. Because also if you do what your teacher tells you to do just for that reason, then it becomes right and wrong. It's if I do this, yeah. I have to do that. It's right. And anything else is wrong. Right. When in art, there is no right and wrong. Yeah. Everything's subjective. And then when you do things wrong, you start to think shit and bad. And then it all just. So while if you do it right, then you're like, oh yeah, my teacher's happy and I'm doing it the right way. That's never right. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a big research also about the things like how do we learn and how do we change, um, like because all about all, all our um, flute playing is about creating new neural pathways and kind yeah. of learning new stuff yeah. or uh, keeping t taking the skills out of out of our brain. It's our yeah. brain who is in power of our sounding mm -hmm. or our flute playing mm -hmm. and everything like this. So. Of course, yeah. um, when you are like in sympathetic nervous system, so meaning like in stress or all of that, yeah, it's impossible for you to, to create like neural pathways. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's impossible for you to change certain things. Okay, so if okay. you want to make a change, yeah. you have to be in in a it or, or actually they. I mean, I'm sure it's not like black and white, but they made results that if with the positive approach, yeah. Um, people learn so much better yeah well this is one of those things again that sport is so far ahead of us in this because obviously sport has a lot more money so they put a lot of money into sports yeah. psychology but they have proven this years ago yeah. that positive reinforcement works a lot better and you look at how football teams and stuff are training now it's so much more about you know encouraging people to play well letting them express letting them have freedom and they've put the money in they've got the results when in music we just don't have that research as yeah. much yeah positive reinforcement well, this is a funny thing, like, because um, with my teacher, with Felix Ringli, mm -hmm. um, we talked about this and, and I was always saying, like, he was saying like, oh yeah, and you know, I had for you a different, little bit different approach because he has different approach for everyone. Which, yeah. yeah? But Sign of a good for teacher. example, for me, 
uh-huh. not always would work that he would be like great 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 uh, you know? okay okay but it was not about this it was a bit more about challenging okay of okay. being a little bit more he found a way that he would say <laughs> i laugh always uh because he would say like yeah you know if you would play this etude like this like and we would be playing to win a beer mm-hmm. today you wouldn't win a beer you know yeah yeah and this is not so hurtful but it makes you feel like a game yeah you know like we are working here together on something yeah and we we want to me and you we Which is want also you yeah. to discover certain things yeah and it's not like your shit yeah. you didn't practice yeah. or you practiced wrong you came home uh, you came here for a lesson you played bad for me yeah no we are like you know we are a team yeah which i so we are here again not against but working with some material so let's say we are here against the attitude yeah and exactly yeah together, that's a cool way of thinking you about, know yeah. to to conquer that attitude yeah let's say. and then you both enjoy the success together as well which is a big yeah. part of it yeah yeah i think when i say positive reinforcement i more mean finding out what a student like what sparks their creativity what they enjoy like if you enjoy that aspect of problem solving or challenges mm-hmm. then it's a positive thing mm-hmm. it's something you enjoy but some students hate that as well and don't enjoy that and need a little bit of yeah. encouragement oh, yeah, and yeah. a pat on the shoulder yeah, and say it's going to be okay and yeah it's funny how it all changes yeah okay I, I, we've been talking for like nearly an hour and I haven't got anywhere near all the questions done <laughs> really quickly I do want to talk about your composition because I listened to that oh. now I watched the video on the internet I'm not going to try and say it until you tell me how to pronounce it so is it gib- gibbit? Gibbit. Okay, thank goodness. So like the, the prayer, let's say. Mm. Okay, yeah, because I've, I've screwed up a lot of pronunciations in this podcast, <laughs> a lot, because I keep trying to say, I said Sebastian Jasso instead of Jacko. Oh, no. Yeah, that was awful. Cute. I had a guest on the podcast, <laughs> I screwed her name up. Yeah, last week I had a guy on and he has an Tomas and his ensemble is called Ensemble Imago and I said Imago so now every time I just ask people, is that how you say it? So, okay, gibbet. So, yes. I watched that anyway. Um, it's on YouTube, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's your own composition. Um, first of all, what was the inspiration behind that? Because I felt, maybe just my bias, but I felt there was a little bit of Irish music feel to it. Well, there was not necessarily any sound-wise inter- uh, inspiration. Okay. It just um, it just came out of a feeling. I know it sounds very like, oh, but... It's, there was not, this is never the way I write or create mm-hmm. anything. I don't have like a concept, like technical. Okay. No, it's not uh, how my brain works, yeah, okay. let's say. That I know that there are composers and people that they have first some kind of structure and then they base on yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I do and I enjoy creating anything. Like I'm also painting a bit I and, know, yeah. and I... Uh, write songs also right write songs yeah are you gonna put them out anytime soon i, I actually had some concerts last year no way like singing the, concerts yeah with your own music yes that's do you play guitar or anything or piano no, or do you have a band we, or? we had like a so like i did um i was wow. singing and uh, my friend was playing cello and then uh, we had electronic, so we kind of cool. composed it all together. And it's like a one one hour, one hour twenty minutes concert. There was like a whole concept of songs, and wow. um, it was based on yeah, on the, the like the nature forces a little bit, and and um, very simple concept like the fire, earth, um, yeah. expression. The, the 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 what was the water and stuff like that yeah. but it was not that simple obviously then in the music there was much more depth okay than just this concept yeah. let's say but it was like a that whole was the structure yeah the concert of of those conversations i have it recorded but i is it online no, no. Oh. it will not it's because it has to be in a better it has to be recorded in a better quality okay than just like a, it was a simple recording okay. of, of us just but would it. you consider doing it in a better co- recording someday yes and really yeah Oh, you're doing everything. Yeah, Yeah, having fun. Yeah, that is cool. (laughs) Ah, okay. So any other plans for compositions? Flute compositions? Are you working on anything at the minute or? Yes. Can you tell us about it or is it a secret? Well, it's not a secret. (laughs) I mean, I am working uh, right now on like a flute solo piece. Cool. Okay. But um, I mean, that's all what I can say, actually. I cannot really like describe things in the world. Okay. Yeah, we'll, but... we'll just wait for it to come out then. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait for it. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, then I got that through. Right. I want to ask some quick questions. Yeah, the kind of end, because unfortunately, 
Yeah, okay. We're nearly at the perfect timing. So, quickish questions. We don't have to be super quick. My first question, I totally forgot flute space asked you this as well, so I'm going to ask you it too, but we can cut it out if you want. Yeah. Um, do you have a favourite flute concerto? Mm, no. Do you remember the answer you gave in flute space? I said D minor, can't do it when back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you can stick with that one if you want. Yeah, but you can't say also I don't really have because it's just uh, too... They are so all amazing. And Is also, there one at the minute that you particularly like? Is there one right now that you feel... Oh, now I would to really or... love to play Jolivet Concerto. Oh, like play it somewhere with Dorothy. It is know? stunning, yeah. Mm. Uh, the Jolivet, I love Jolivet's music, and by far my favorite recordings are Ellen, Ellen Boulay here in Luxembourg. Yeah. yeah, her recordings are unbelievable. Yeah. Jolivet, the yes. two discs oh with Naxos. God. I mean, can you imagine doing all that work? I have no idea how she did it. <laughs> I bought that album when it came out, and I was like, "How did she so, do all that such work?" Such a great It's CD. unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, well, speaking. Of, yeah, definitely do. May or may not be a guest on this podcast at some point. Mm. <laughs> she was busy today, but I will get her. Um, <laughs> Speaking of CDs, do you remember the first flute CD or album that you bought? Yes, that was Magali Mosnier. <laughs> we talked about this before. <laughs> I love it and I had a crush on her and I, you know, just... Magali like, would be delighted to hear like this. like <laughs> listening to it and obsessing about it hours, you know, I would lay on the bed <laughs> in my, in my um, conservatory room, let's yeah. say, and then I lived in the, you know, like outside of my home, yeah, so like yeah. in the dormitory. Yeah, yeah, like boarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like boarding kind of school. In this little room, looking at the ceiling and listening to her CD. Mm. There you are. She's going to be delighted to hear this. Yeah, by the time this comes out, the episode with Magali will be out. So, yeah. So that's the first album, mm. Fantasy. Okay, cool. Do you remember the first CD you bought that wasn't flute? In general, any kind of music? <laughs> I feel like you can see people's real personality. Do you know, but you don't want to admit? Oh my God, too bad, people. Too bad. Please tell me, please tell me. I bet you it's not oh that bad. Oh my god, that's so embarrassing. But I mean, we all been teenagers, huh? Yeah, so. mine was some forty one, all killer, no fellow, the American, no Canadian pop. I don't, I don't know, but mine was Tokyo Hotel. Do you know? Tokyo. Oh yeah, I definitely know Tokyo Hotel. Tokyo Hotel's not that embarrassing. They're German, aren't they? Tokyo Hotel. Yeah. They were very cool back in the day. <laughs> I hope so. Well, <laughs> that was my first CD I bought it. I was obsessed. I was like, you know, picking Tokyo like Hotel I was are, yeah, like the, the saving my well. money for it. Did you have that kind of style as well? Did you dress that kind of way? No, I was trying, but it was really miserable from my side. It was just not, not, it was (laughs) not, I was trying to be that person, but was definitely not working. I was more like a, like I was making my own earrings from lemon, from lemon. (laughs) Okay, yeah. Cut lemon, dry Um, them on the sun and make my own earrings. I was the same person. Yeah, not the Tokyo Hotel girl then. No, they're very different. No, (laughs) but my, my boyfriend back then was uh, playing percussion in a band. Okay. So I was going for like a rock band. So I was going for all those concerts. And as I'm saying, I was trying to be that person, but yeah you can't force it can you you just not you yeah Yeah. Um, that's a good one actually that's a really good answer i've heard worse uh (laughs) so obviously you travel a lot for music where is the best place you think for food where's your favorite place to eat in terms of countries or cultures do you miss polish food by the way you must miss home Uh, food not really yeah maybe my, my grandma's food yeah because she is amazing but she is um yeah, but it's just grandma food. Yeah, okay. But not Polish Polish because, well, I love Poland and Poland is so great. Go visit because it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that Polish kitchen just doesn't really suit my lifestyle that much. Okay. Like in the end, I like a lot of colorful vegetables. Okay. I love just uh, different types of vegetables. I don't love meat that much. Mm. yeah no i like colorful stuff so i think i would say france yeah okay that's that's a very good answer to be yeah right yeah Mm. um is there a piece that you haven't performed yet that you would like to berlin phil but i'm gonna play there in two months (laughs) you are that's right you're playing in the camera music style of berlin philharmonic yeah what are you playing um, what am I playing? Yeah. Carte Manuel Bach, D minor. Whoa. And Mozart, G major. In the same concert? Two concertos on one concert, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a fun one, I think. Oh, that'll be incredible. It's going to be a bit like that. When is that? 
11th of April. 11th of April. Okay, this podcast will be out way before that. But so. I mean, I played there, so it's not fair to say, actually. I played before. But it was always my dream to play solo. Yeah. I played, like, with piano. Okay. In the chamber music hall. Yeah. And with the orchestra. Yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> Which is incredible as well. I've actually never even been to it yet. No? No. Go. I need Please, to go. I was I like, last Berlin, week, yeah. it was incredible. <sighs> and it was yeah amazing okay that'd be really cool um oh if you could do any job outside of music what would you do can i answer the other question again well, please do yeah you know what i would love to play what in hagia sofia that's like Where? a hagia sofia it's like a huge um, um it's a mosque right now but before oh. it was um church okay yeah and it's one of the there's a cd recorded um in that place or like imitated about the 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 okay the acoustic of that church where is it um where is it um i have no idea oh my god wait let me say uh, let me let me check fast you can check as slow as you want away we've got loads of time <laughs> we can cut it out yeah okay or we can keep it in, which is, yeah, <laughs> which is okay. often what I do in this podcast. I'm like, I always say that. I'm like, yeah, we'll cut it out. We'll get it in editing. As if I have like an editing team that's going to do yeah, okay, this Of for course, me. Istanbul. In Istanbul. Istanbul, you know? okay. Okay. It's like Grand Mosque right now. But okay. It was before. Uh, so they were like kind of oh. historically fighting over that place a bit, you know? Okay. The religions. Okay. Where we're like trying to take it away yeah. from each other and but like acoustically i mean but i don't think it would ever ever happen maybe you maybe. know the, the you never know you never know you really don't you never yeah. know but it would be my dream to play there mm, that's wow. a really good one that's a really good answer um okay yeah a job outside i feel like it's a good question for you if you could do any job that wasn't music what would you do i would love to be for some time a person that I don't know how you call it in English when you take care of people's ticket in the train in Swiss mountains. You know? So hang on, the people that get the train in the Swiss mountains. You know when you. Oh, like the, the people that go up the mountains. No, 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 nothing. <laughs> well, I would love to be uh, many things. Huh? Okay, I, yeah, I that's what I thought. Yeah, <laughs> give me them. Tell me I them would all. love to be full time painter. Okay. And be that person yeah. in my studio, you yeah, know, just, and being like oh, yeah. in there. Yeah. That's also composer in that sense painter yeah. and composer in the same person in the same time <laughs> yeah, in the same yeah. studio yeah okay. i mean i'm gonna be that i mean it's great but <laughs> the question was outside of music and you're going back in oh you're you right you're out, right you so out. it's not fun you can't be a composer i, I would love count. to be for some time the so you help me with english okay Go. Mm, so the guy that is checking tickets in the train the conductor. The conductor. Yeah. I would love to be the conductor That's in the why I was train okay. in Swiss mountains. I that, would love to be that person. See, that's and why I was just, confused because I didn't think you really meant the conductor yeah. of the train. Okay. Yes. And you know, my friends know it and my, my boyfriend. But like normal trains yeah. or like, are they special kinds of trains? I've no, never been to the Swiss trains. mountains. No, They're, but the views and just like the vibe. And I love trains myself. Yeah, okay. Not, not in Germany so much so. But, yeah, because they're never there. But, uh, but they also, I, ha I am a very lucky person and I never have problems with Deutsche Bahn. That is a lie. No. <laughs> that is a lie. No. There's no way. No, really. I nev I have barely any kind of like crazy Verspätungen. And always la one time what? last what? month when I had uh, when I had to travel overnight and my late my train was late one hour. Uh -huh. It happened to be like this, that my train went exactly to the station when I had <laughs> when to next... check another uh, the same train, but in another yeah. place. And I totally, you know, that's cut down. good luck. Yeah, So I have a very good luck. I'm um, I'm a lucky person. Yeah, you're general. the only person. I would say I hate Deutsche Bahn, but in case they want to sponsor the podcast, yeah. <laughs> I love Deutsche Bahn. So These are always so on time. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I would love to be conductor. That's such a cool answer. Time. That's a really good but answer. In Swiss mountains or somewhere beautiful. Okay. Like in north of Poland. So you can just look at things and then stamp tickets and that's Yeah, it. and be like, hey, well, you don't stamp tickets anymore, but do you? It's scam. Also, but. I'm like super positive, and I know it's not always like this. Sometimes I have to deal with drunk people and stuff like that. In the Swiss mountains, though? Well, that's not exactly. So, no. I yeah. think they're like hikers and like people who. Yeah. Um, it's incredibly a couple of dogs yeah that's a that's an incredibly good answer <laughs> um okay last question do you have a favorite drink you can say alcoholic or non-alcoholic 
And whenever you say, I'm going to push them for sponsorship. <laughs> no. But uh, do you have a favorite drink? Mm, <laughs> I love Fritz Rabarber Schorle. The Fritz, like the Fritz Cola people, those mm. ones. Oh, yeah, it is good to be fair. It's the rhubarb one. Yeah, the rhubarb, yeah, yeah. It's really good. I think it's from Hamburg, isn't it, that rhubarb one? I don't know, but I'm, Fritz, it, yeah, when I'm in Fritz Germany, yeah. I am obsessed about this thing. It's really good. Is they, right? they don't have it in Switzerland or anywhere else, but just in Germany. But if I like a favorite, favorite drink, that's my favorite. Really? Drink. Fritz rhubarb one. Is there any like weird Polish and then sodas or anything like that? No. That mm. we should try? That we should all get to try? No. Mm. There is some funny Austrian yeah. and Swiss ones, definitely. Yeah. I can't remember what that Swiss one's called. Is it Austrian? Ah, yeah. Ricola. No. Ricola is the, the candy. Rivella. What's that? The Swiss. I think it might be that I'm thinking of, yeah. Mm. It was a bit weird. But it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it if they want to sponsor. Okay. That is... Is that it? Wow, we've done it. We've got I'm through the... I'm having fun. We can go on. And the episode is going to be like three hours. Yeah, we can do it. Too. Yeah. Um, I haven't got any more questions. Actually, do you know what? Why? Just in case, before I cut this, I will go back to the older questions to see if I can find anything else because I skipped over so many of them. Um, actually, I didn't. Yeah. We got through them all. Yeah. Awesome. Have we really been talking for an hour? It really doesn't feel like an hour, does it? No. Well, Ben, is there anything you want to plug? Is there anything you want to tell people to go listen to? Is there anything you want? This is your chance to shamelessly advertise if you want to tell people to check anything out or... Oh, well, not necessarily. No? Just, I mean... Your social media, 100 days of practice? Oh, yeah. Does this count as one of... Does this count today as one of your 100 days? Can you use this? I think not. <laughs> no. I think my 100 days of practice is going to be my broken flute today, yeah? Oh, yeah. No, but I'm not posting it on Instagram. Only, you know, only people... On yeah, because by the time this comes out, it'll be fixed. It's just too shameful to put my <laughs> broken flute on Instagram. Yeah. I don't do that. But yeah, so you're doing 100 days of practice, but you're, I think you're the only person I know who's actually doing it every day. Because most people I know record it like a week in advance. You think they so? They record like 50 episodes and... No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. You're too honest for that and you actually are posting every day. I try to. Wow. I'm very impressed. I mean, I record... What day are we on now? Because I think that, uh, I don't know, eight, nine nice okay because i feel like the but i skipped some because i was really sick true and you were doing an e-bear so so that is not fair that off. that was not fair but it's just like life coming into the way but i mean if i have like 39 fever yeah you degree. shouldn't be trying to post on instagram no, though maybe not well fingers crossed keeps going well i would recommend everyone check out your instagram thank you uh, your website sviannoikabauer.com yeah um, and your YouTube channel obviously and if anyone can find the video of you singing when you're 12 years old that'd be even oh, better <laughs> so get to like it I will have found it by this tip. point <laughs> great well then we're going to wrap it up here mm. um, we're going to I'm going to go join Luxembourg for the rest of the day thank you very much for coming on this was so much fun yes. um, yeah cheerio everyone that's it bye kisses